Hi everyone, it's Moe K Swedish Whiskey Girl and today I'm here with Tom and Toll and Old Valentruen. And I'm also going to explain a bit about how these are kind of the same thing but still not at all. So I'm going to start with admitting that I had no idea what Old Valentruen was until I got invited to take part in a tasting just a few days ago with the wonderful Claire and Ian who is the brand ambassadors for Angus Dundee. So of course they have brands like Tom and Toll and Glen Caddam. And when they said they we're going to do a PT tasting, I was like a little bit confused. I was like, okay, interesting. I know they have Tom and Toll PT Tang and I was like, oh, okay, so we're going to try those ones. Yeah, sounds good. I'm in. I also have a lovely memory with PT Tang. It's, um, it also seems to be one of those whiskies that people either love or hate. But for me, it reminds me of when I was home. So I've lived in Edinburgh for about four years, but I used to go home on Christmas, of course, and in the summers. When we were home on Christmas, my parents actually went to the Caribbean, but we thought it would be nice to go say hi to our neighbours because we hadn't seen them in a while. So it was me and my wee brother and he uh, lives sometimes in, he works sometimes in the States. So we were both home. So we were like, oh, we'll go around and we'll say hi to them. And stopped by for a little kind of fika, some uh, kind of pastries and some coffee. So they're a couple, um, Britt, Marie and Nisse. And Nisse, he, he said, you like whiskey now, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I've, I've just started working with it. And he, he was like, oh, come, follow me. Um, you, have, you must have a dram. And I was like, oh, sounds good. And he took me into their hallway. So they have two entrances, one that's kind of the main entrance for like fancier guests. And then another hallway, which kind of used for everyday use. And he opened this kind of, he just took, took away a little part of the wall. And in there he had this little whiskey stash, which is lovely. And he said, have you tried this one? And then, because he, he knew I kind of liked peated whiskey, so he took out Tom and Toll Peter Tang and he's like, oh, I bought this when I was last in Scotland. And I was like, oh, that's lovely. Or if he was in an airport, I can't remember, but really nice. And I got to try it. And that's the first time I had Tom and Toll Peter Tang. So of course it has a lovely memory to me. And I remember it as being very nice as well. And it was just when I was starting out on my whiskey journey. So very happy I got to try it again. But... I'm not sure if I've tried the Petit Tang 15 before, but it was a very interesting tasting. And the Petit Tang, there's a non-age statement, and the 15, they're both bottled at 40% ABV. And then Old Balentruen, the non-age statement and the 15, they are bottled at 50. So basically, Petit Tang is... No, let's start with Old Balentruen. So Old Balentruen is made at Tom and Toll Distillery. I think five weeks a year, they use heavily peated malt. So I believe peated to 55 ppm, which is how you measure peat. And they call that batch Old Balentruen. And they don't actually change the cut points for their spirits, which they sometimes do with other at other distilleries, that you have a longer heart or a shorter heart, longer faints or whatever. But they I keep the exact same cut points, I believe, for Tom and Toll and the old Ballantruen kind of batches. And then they mark those casks that old as old Ballantruen in the warehouse. So when they make a peaty tang, they mix their unpeated Tom and Toll with old Ballantruen. So it makes it a, a mixture between both. And then they also bottle old Ballantruen as itself, which is this kind of heavily peated Tom and Toll. <laughs> You understand what I mean, I think. If you don't, please put questions in the comments below and I'll try to explain it further. But I hadn't heard much about Old Valentruen, but you can get it in a lot of markets, uh, which I was surprised that I hadn't come across it before, but maybe you have. And if you have, please let me know your thoughts. But we are gonna start today by tasting the peaty tanks because they're lightly, more lightly peated, and then we're gonna move on to the Old Valentruens, starting with the peaty tang and non-age statements. This is such a, it's an interesting smoke. It's very different to other types of smoke, I would say. Initially it feels quite grassy to me. Grassy and almost like licorice, so like fennel and that kind of spice. But very easy going, it's quite sweet in a way, but not overpoweringly sweet, it's just the kind of a, a sweeter smoke. Yeah, sweet, grassy, and a little bit of licorice, but very gentle licorice. 
I have this weird <laughs> relationship with licorice because it's I really really didn't like it when I was a kid now I kind of like it sometimes but when I eat it I almost always go oh I'm not gonna like this and I like it and I'm like ooh, it, it feels a little bit <laughs> it's very very silly but it almost feels a bit dangerous which is definitely not at all but it's that thing when you eat something you don't like and then suddenly you like it you're like hmm interesting but yes yeah, so it's a very intriguing nose but let's have a little taste of that. Mm. very gentle still has that grassy smoke on the palate a hint of licorice and more kicks in on the finish but I think what's so lovely about this one is that if you've tried Tom and Tull before, they are known for having quite a creamy feel to them. They're quite friendly, easygoing, creamy, and that creamy mouthfeel and texture makes it even nicer, I would say. Especially to someone who might be new to whiskey. It's uh, very approachable. And this might be a good one if you're just starting out with peat or curious about smoky whiskies. But I think you still get the creaminess on this, which is, yeah, it's a very, very nice combination with the smoke. Yeah, it just feels like a very grassy smoke, but in a good way. <laughs> grassy and it's not as sweet on the palate as I think it is on the nose. feels even more grassy on the nose now. But let's move on to the Petit Tang 15, which is of course a 15 year old. And I also believe that there's primarily bourbon casks used for all these expressions. This is so weird because this is completely different. It's so, so different. It has this kind of tropical note to it and the peatiness is very, very subdued. It's like pineapple treats or like pineapple candies almost. A tiny bit of that grassiness as well. I love about that licorice actually. It's like a pineapple licorice candy. But let's have a taste. Slangerat. It's, it's so weird, it's very different. It's um, it's like kind of pineapple, pineapple and cream candies, I would say. Tiny bit of the grassiness and very, very, very tiny of that licorice, which makes it feel like a, that pineapple cream licorice candies. And the Peter Tang non H statement now it feels so fresh and just like, yeah, fresh and light. And the 15's more denser, more a candy shop. We're gonna go back to them after the old Ballantrins again, but let's try the old Ballantrin non H statement. Weird. This, uh, to me today, I get the notes of kind of peated yeast, like a doughiness. It's definitely more peat on this, and it doesn't have that sweetness that the peat tang does. It's more bonfire, but still not big, robust bonfire. It's still more gentle bonfire, but more floral. So more like a highland smokiness. A little bit of sweetness underneath, but not at all as on the Peter Tang, no. Hmm, now that smells a little bit sooty. Interesting. But let's have a taste of the old Valentine knowledge statements. more charry, sooty, like a very charry bonfire. 
It's a little bit more meaty as well. Now on the palette, it's more this robust big bonfire that's towards the charry ness. Still with a little bit of that kind of fennel licorice note. Like a herby, yeah, like a herby bonfire. Slightly grassy as well. But this, I think, would be very interesting to someone who likes Isla whiskies. Especially if you like, like Ardbeg, like a villain. Maybe Kilholman? Or like Peter Bunahaven's Brookladis? So quite juicy, has a little bit of that kind of pineapple sweetness in it. The grassy big bonfire is a lovely, lovely smoky flavour to it. And I insist that 50% also brings everything out a little bit more. The Old Ballantrons actually sit at quite a nice price point as well, so if anyone's looking. Okay, 15. The Old Ballantrons and 15 year old. Oh, again, this is just so different. <laughs> this is sweeter, it's more tropical. More mango-y maybe, mango banana on this one. There's still a whiff of smoke there. I don't know why, but and I didn't get this on the tasting, but the Petey Tang 15 smells, has, has something in it amongst that tropical aroma that makes me very confused that it reminds me of like walking into a, and this is gonna sound very weird, but walking into like a, a butcher's or a, a fishmonger if you didn't have the fish scent. What is that? How would you explain that? I'm not sure. <sighs> I'm just seeing the imagery that goes on in my head and sometimes it makes absolutely no sense, uh, sense and I'm so sorry about that. But let's go back to the old boundary of 15 see if I can make any sense of this instead. Yeah, it's like mango, banana, tropical with a bit of that kind of charry smoke. Let's have a taste, Slendjava. I would say this is more like, oh it still has a big bonfire smoke, but initially it has a tropical note, which makes it feel like the tropical notes have a charry, there's like a ball of tropical fruits and the outside's char, and then, then the, the, the charry bonfire smoke just grows. Mm. It's, it is, it's smoky. It's peated, but it's a lovely peatiness. It has... Of course, this is always difficult because I am a bit peat blind sometimes, so I don't know if what I'm perceiving is me in a state of being peat blind or if I'm not. <laughs> this do I haven't drunk a peated whiskey in a while and I'm lying now because I did drink it just a few days ago when I did this tasting, so ignore that. But it's it feels big, like a big smoke. If you like heavily peated whiskies, you should definitely try this. It has this different kind of grassy note to it. Okay, I'm gonna go get an art bag and just compare them so you have some sort of reference. Here we go. Art bag Ugedal. Yum. Here we go. So this is a 54.2, I think. Yeah, 54.2. Also non age demons. Um, Ugedel on the nose initially is quite vanilla ice cream. So that's the peat blindness. Um, also big smokiness. Why is this so vanilla ice cream today? It's so, I can't even like, it's so vanilla ice cream. 
Interesting. Hmm, okay, so Ardbeg Yggdrasil has this maritime oiliness to it. It's oilier, it's slightly saltier, slightly more, like when I do that, when I breathe out through my nose when I close my mouth, it feels more forest as in, let's try the non H statement. This is more, it is forest, but it's drier forest. It doesn't have any of that kind of oily maritime feeling to it. It's more dry summer forest. Mm. Oaky, like oaky, dry summer forest. How can I explain that better? Let's compare with the 15 again. That one's just more tropical fruits. So peat level wise, I mean, I think they're peated to about the same level, so 50 ppm, but it's, Ugedil just feels colder, as in where Old Valentine feels warmer, but they have the same kind of bonfire smoke to them, but Ugedil has layers of oiliness and saltiness and maritime-ness to it as well, whereas Old Valentine feels a little bit kind of oakier and... Like, Ugedil feels wet in a way that it's wet weather and Old Bountruen feels like summer because it feels more like dry wood instead of that kind of rainy wet wood that is in the Ugadil. Does that make sense? Anyways, so that's a little bit comparison between our big Ugadil and the Old Bountruens, but let's go back to the Petit Tang and try them because on the tasting it was actually the Petit Tang non H statement that was my favourite. <sighs> Grassy licorice. A little bit of whiff of that gentle smoke. It's quite vegetal. If you don't like vegetal and grassy, then maybe this is not the whiskey for you. But if you want to explore a different kind of smoke, it definitely is. Grassy and creamy. That's what it is on the palate. It's sweeter as well. I. It's a little bit weird, and that's why I love it. But yeah, let's have a last look on the Petey Tang 15 and then we're done. <laughs> it has this weird nose. It's tropical, but it also has that butcher's <laughs> aroma. Slightly meaty, but it's like an raw meatiness. This is so, it's changing. This has definitely changed and I'm not sure. It's like honey sponge cake as well, but okay, let's have a taste. So smooth, creamy, tropical, very gentle. If you're looking for a whiskey to introduce someone who might not like whiskey or think it's too strong, Tomato is a great one because it's so creamy and so easy going that it's just welcoming. I would love to hear what you think. Have you tried Tom and Tull Petey Tang? Either the Knowledge Statement or the 15? Perhaps you tried the Old Valentruvens? Or are you curious to try them? Please let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links with the Master of Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All the information and the links are in the description here below, as well as links to my website, my Patreon, my Teespring shop, and my Instagram if you're curious about that. And of course, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much for wanting to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. It's so very much appreciated. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slangeva, skål.